Hello folks and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi News, etc. And the Hi-Fi News will be with you in a moment. Got the host of news items for you, got the trivia question as well. And I'll be with you in a second, and, which is less than a moment. And also I have a hint tip, hinty tippy kind of thing. So that's to come, but let's start with the trivia. And we're changing the theme to sports science, I think I'll call it. And the question for today is a relatively simple one. The father of musician and poet Gil Scott Heron was a professional footballer in the 1950s. Which legendary British club did he play for? Oh, one more time. The father of musician and poet Gil Scott Heron was a professional footballer in the 1950s. Which legendary British club did he play for? Have a little think. Please don't do any Googling. I will tell you at the end of the video. Until then, folks, let's do some news. And we'll begin with Lima and the Neutron and the Graviton. Well, Lima Acoustics has finally unveiled its brand new Quantum range. Now, they produced the odd product here and there, but it's been quite a while since they've done a complete range, probably over 10 years or more. Anyway, the new Quantum Hi-Fi range has been entirely designed engineered and built in the Welsh Pool factory in Powys in Wales, overseen by Lima Acoustics co-founder and ex-BBC sound engineer Lee Taylor. The Quantum, well, the range borrows heavily from the company's flagship Constellation series. It's been repackaged to improve affordability. The casework is simpler. Single transformers replace multi-transformers and the board assembly has been simplified. The majority of the PCB components are shared with the Constellation series, even so, and that allows economies of scale to directly benefit the new quantum range. The Neutron preamp, for example, that features 13 inputs. So that's quite a few, hey. And that introduces Lima Acoustics' latest circuit designs, offering low crosstalk. It includes a switchable moving magnet and moving coil phono stage based on Lima Acoustics' own design. There's also an ESS 24-bit 192kHz USB DAC, a dedicated headphone amplifier, plus a Burr Brown analog volume control. Now, those inputs I mentioned, they include four RCA pairs. There's an XLR pair, phono preamp pair, three opticals, three coax sockets, and a USB. Outputs, they include a fixed level record, two dedicated subwoofer ports, a headphone amplifier, plus a 12 volt trigger. Price for all those bits and pieces in a box will cost you £1,500. I bet some of you thought I was going to say four or five thousand pounds, but no, one and a half is the asking price. There's also a power amplifier called the Graviton, and this is a class AB design offering 150 watts into 8 ohms. This high current unit, well, it uses six output transistors per channel. Price is once more. £1,500. So, pre and power, if you bought the two together separately, that would cost you three grand. I'm up on my maths. But there is a bit of a discount here. If you buy both at the same time, it's going to cost you, well, for the pair, £2,800. The casework is made in the UK, and that is either coloured in brushed black or silver finishes with solid aluminium precision machined front panels and control dials. Available now, get them while they're hot. Next, we have a subwoofer from ATC.
The ATC, and ATC, in case you don't know, stands for Acoustic Transducer Company. ATC, they have the so-called C4 Sub Mark II that uses a new proprietary 12-inch SS75 314 SC Sub Bass Driver. And there's a name that trips off the tongue. Hey, that's powered by a newly developed 300 watt Class AB amp design. Both of these elements are hand built and installed within a substantial cabinet at the company's Stroud based production HQ. ATC, well, they use a short coil long gap configuration surrounded by a 6 inch 150 millimeter N48M neodymium magnet, the most powerful magnet the company has ever used. The redesigned motor system features a new rubber roll surround, there's a new spider, a high flow motor venting for low noise and also compression. This subwoofer offers two balanced line inputs for stereo or AV home cinema systems, while two balanced outputs are available to feed partnering speakers or to daisy chain multiple subs. The C4 Sub Mark II 70 litre cabinet uses 25 millimeters, that's one inch thick panels and heavy bracing. It's available in standard cherry, black ash, walnut, and oak real wood veneers, as well as satin black and satin white finishes, or in premium rosewood European crown cut walnut, which is a first for me, gotta say. Burr Magnolia and Pippi Oak, which is another first. I'm educating myself today. These are all real wood veneers with the option of high gloss over veneers and black white lacquers, piano lacquers, I should say, also available. Price, well, it's all about the finishes, I think. Standard finishes, £3,990 for your sub. Premium finishes, where we're looking at 4750 you can add the high gloss over veneers for an extra 1979 If you want to go piano black or white, you're looking at £6,140, which is quite a it's quite a bump up from the standard finish, isn't it? I'll put a link below contact points and all that jazz if you want to check it out. Mutech have what's called the Ref 10 Nano Master Clock for anyone who has a digital chain. Now, they offer a what they call focused version of the company's 10 megahertz reference master clock, and it can be directly connected up to four 10 megahertz compatible devices. You can connect this master clock to a host of digital products, hopefully to improve sound, and they include things like, well, DACs, of course, network switches, re-clockers, clock generators, CD players, servers, streamers, all supported. Now, in case these components do not have a dedicated 10 megahertz input, and many will not, I'm sure, you can grab a MC3 Plus or MC3 Plus USB interface from Mutech to provide the necessary connection between the Ref 10 Nano and your box. Having this master clock connected to your box in the digital chain should improve things like transparency, it should enhance the clarity. Based on an oven controlled quartz oscillator and arriving with a built in power supply, this product features four galvanically isolated switchable BNC clock outputs. The Mutech Ref 10 Nano is available with either black or silver front panels. And I have a Euro price only for now for this one at 1,999. Again, as for all of these, I'll put links below. Next up, we have a soundbar from Platin. Platin, 
Platin? I ain't sure. I'm going to say Platin. The Platin Audio Milan 5.1.4 soundbar connects you to your TV via HDMI EARC, but it also uses a reset technology to add a wireless subwoofer and surround sound channels. Reset supports 16-bit audio at 48 kilohertz, and that means four channels of audio, including surround and height options, plus that subwoofer. Connections include HDMI ARC or E ARC, optical, coax, RCA, and 3.5mm auxiliary, plus Bluetooth, although I'm not quite sure what version that might be. I guess 5.0, but like I say, I ain't sure. There's also a controlling app for both iOS and Android to access all controls and settings. Now, I only have a dollar price for this one right now, and that price officially is $799. But I also have a festive discount price of $599. I'm not sure how long that sale, as it were, will continue. So check the link below. There's no there's no sort of this price will end at this day. So I've got a feeling they're just keeping this thing ticking over seeing how it goes, seeing what the comeback is like, and then monitoring it. So if you're interested, I'd buy sooner rather than later. Next is a CD player from Yamaha called the CD603, and it is effectively a CD disc changer. And no, you haven't stepped back into the 90s. Yamaha is actually producing a brand new CD player with a built-in five disc CD changer called, as I say, the CDC603. I missed a C, didn't I? CD C603. It uses what Yamaha calls the play exchange. So play, letter X, change to feature a swap disc facility. You can actually swap a disc while you're playing another disc, which is useful and I don't think was an option back in the 90s. Could be wrong. Don't think that was a familiar option. Anyway, Sound also appears to be on the mind of Yamaha, thank goodness, because there is a pure direct button option on the front to bypass all the electronic gubbins inside, all that noise creating stuff. And I guess the CD changer itself will create a lot of noise and vibration. So pure direct is welcome. There's also something called laser pickup floating mechanism to provide a sense of isolation. And there's something called Intelligent Digital Servo. Do you know what? The Japanese companies, <laughs> Yamaha, Denon, Sony, Technics, they love these names. <laughs> anyway, just hit me just then. Anyway, Intelligent Digital Servo. It's a digital processing feature, and it's there to correct tracking errors, signal errors, and the like. Now, the player in disc terms can handle CD, CDR, and CDRW discs, but it also plays WAV and FLAC files via the 24-bit 96K DAC through a USB socket. So load up a USB stick full of music, and it'll play that. Prices? Well, not as high as I thought it might be, actually. I've got a I've got, I haven't got a pound price. I've got a dollar price of $550 and a euro price of 599 euros. Expect the pound price to be well, similar in that ballpark anyway. That, my friends, is your Hi-Fi News. Let's do a hint and tip.
Now, a relatively quickie and one that relates to damping your room. Now, I have talked about the sonic benefits of damping your room, sonically damping your room. And I mentioned it during my recent Moving House for Hi-Fi Users guide. And I have also a dedicated damping your room on the cheap video and text version, my YouTube channel and my website. This tip is devoted to those of you damping your room on a tight budget. Well, tight-ish. I may have mentioned this hint during the original Dampers Buyers Guide, but I wanted to emphasize it here because, well, I'm not too sure if I originally placed enough emphasis on this particular point. One of the things you want to remove is excess echo, excess reverb. And you can hear this. You can hear this if you walk around the room and you clap your hands in different parts of the room. And that can give you harsh mid-range and screechy treble. No matter what hi-fi you've got, it will dominate the hi-fi and overlay the hi-fi with that nastiness. Now, there's a host of methods to remove echo and reverb, and they include furnishings like different chairs or bookshelves, heavy curtains, and the like. But I also recommend hanging a few pieces of art, or two, or three, on the walls. That is, pieces of canvas art, and I emphasize the word canvas, secured to, as I say, one or more walls. They are ideal because they potentially cover a wide expense of walls, so they offer kind of good value for money on that level. And of course, they don't protrude into the room and they keep the floor area free. Now, the point I wanted to push here was that I do not recommend framed pictures holding glass. It might protect the picture itself, but it does nothing for the room in terms of damping. In many cases, hanging a glass fronted picture on a wall will produce more echo, more reverb than the original wall because the glass is hard, it's smooth and reflective. So avoid glass on the front of artwork. Instead, look for a canvas only picture and hang that or them on your wall. The canvas will help to dampen things a touch in that part of the room. It will soak up those sound waves, at least enough to reduce the nasty effects in that part of the room. As I say, canvas is also superior to glossy smooth prints for a similar reason. Now sure, canvas art is rather more expensive than a simple print. In most cases, even a print behind a piece of glass, but in sonic terms, it's definitely worth it. Also spending 40, 50, 60 pounds or dollars or euros on a piece of canvas art is also a lot cheaper than some of the more specialist damping constructions or obstructions as I see them that I've seen on the market. And your canvas art will look infinitely nicer as well. And that's it folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. But before we go, you will want an answer to that trivia question, hey. The father of musician and poet Gil Scott Heron was a professional footballer in the 1950s. Which legendary British club did he play for? And the answer is Glasgow Celtic. A Jamaican by birth, Gilbert Heron was a professional footballer in both Canada and in the United States before playing five games for Celtic in 1951. And that's your last. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. Can I ask you down below if you can click on the like and subscribe buttons that will help this channel enormously. And further down, if you can click on the, uh, well, I will put connection connections. That's not the right word, is it? I will put links to the companies mentioned in this video. That's better. And uh, in addition, there'll be links to my website, new, still, and shiny. Deserves a look. Very nice indeed. Nice and professional. And also a link to my Patreon page. There's a brand new, brand new, what is this? Hi, well, one of these. There's a brand new Hi Fi News, etc. If you want to see what's coming on this YouTube channel next time, you can see it now. It's on my Patreon channel right now. 
Also, I have a Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. There's a link down there too. I'll be back. I'll be back soon because of all this festive malarkey. Timing is a bit up the spout. But as soon as I can push out another one of these, it'll be it'll be another news thing. Then I'll do that. And I hope to see you soon. And that's about it, really. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, folks, bye-bye for now.